Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to look at the latest from the live radar run through the weather warnings as we do have a yellow rain warning issued for southern parts of Wales as we are going to see some very heavy rain through the overnight hours this evening we can see a bit of a squall feature move through so it is only lasting a few hours this warning but it is for very intense rainfall rates. So we'll have a look at those weather warnings and we'll also look at the latest UKV, look at the precipitation tonight and of course over the next five days along with the temperatures as well, as it is going to remain fairly unsettled as we do progress over the coming days. There will be some drier and warmer patches, especially in the south and the east because we're seeing a bit of a battle between low pressure and high pressure out towards Europe. And that sort of pattern is looking likely to continue into early October as well. As we see from the latest GFS, GM, East and OEF and ensembles, the jet stream is looking likely to still be impacting us quite significantly, but taking more a south to northerly track, i.e. the winds for the UK are coming more from a southwesterly or southerly direction. So in places, we could actually see some really quite warm and dry weather as we head into early October. Now, there's no heat wave or anything like that at this stage, uh, as it's looking like pretty transient air masses ahead of low pressure systems. But we are seeing some really warm summer-like air masses wafting our way from some of the runs at the moment. So we'll have to have a look at that in the second half of the video. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now that Storm Agnes has cleared, we have seen some brighter weather in places further eastwards, but we're now starting to see weather fronts re-emerge out of the Atlantic. For much of England and Wales, it's this sort of patchy, light to moderate rainfall. But you can see the main frontal system out towards the west, across parts of Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland and Western Scotland, where we have got a bit of a squall feature developing. Now, this will become more extensive over the coming hours as it moves eastwards. And as it starts to uh, intensify, this is where we could see some very heavy rain across South Wales and elsewhere as well. So could be in for quite a wet and wild evening in many areas, but luckily the majority of this heavy rain will be falling around the 10, 11 p.m. point uh, into the early hours of the morning. So most people it shouldn't impact. But if you are out this evening, do be aware there is going to be some very heavy rainfall around in places on this sort of uh, spreading from sort of South Wales, Southwest England into the Midlands and even perhaps into Eastern England as well. Now temperatures today haven't been amazing, but in the east or you have seen some briefly dry weather you can see that it has got up to around 20 degrees once again today you can see quite a big contrast across northern ireland and the republic of ireland some yellows to the east some blues to the west and that's because the school line and the heavy rain we're moving through is a cold front so seeing cooler air move in behind it off the atlantic so we are going to be going fresher for all areas as the cold front eventually sweeps through in, uh, in whatever capacity it eventually does. Some areas will be very heavy rain, other areas will just be a bit of cloud and lighter rain. Now, if you look at the weather warnings, you can see we've got a weather warning issued uh, only for six hours this evening from 8 p.m. until 2 a.m. for South Wales. Heavy rain may cause some disruption across parts of South Wales for a time later Thursday evening and overnight. Heavy rain may affect parts of South Wales tonight, although there remains considerable uncertainty regarding the position and amount of rainfall. There is a small chance that up to 50 millimetres could fall in just a few hours across the warning zone. High impact, low likelihood, and said it runs into Friday. Now, if you look at the latest UKV, you can see that rain moving in from the west through the rest, uh, through uh, earlier today and through this afternoon. And look what happens across South Wales and parts of the Midlands. It really engages through this through this evening around 9, 10 p.m. We're seeing these darker reds and oranges appearing, so really heavy rainfall rain. And if you equate that to the legend at the bottom of the graph, we're looking at perhaps 10 to 15 millimetres per hour. So that's why we could see 50 millimetres over the course of the evening, uh, over a few hours. Those intense rainfall rates really are only in that small strip along the school line in the cold front. And eventually it will clear eastwards and could give some heavier pulses at times through the very early hours of the morning. But for most, as you wake up on Friday, it'll actually be relatively dry and relatively pleasant day. Yes, fresher air masses, but really only a marginally fresher air mass. So it's not going to affect the temperatures all too much. Just a little bit cooler further westwards, especially. A few showers in Scotland, but again, nothing too crazy. And as we progress into Saturday, you can see we continue to have a few showers, but thicker cloud does start to move in as another weather system moves in. Again, 
interestingly, watch its positioning. It's further northwards and westwards. And this is because we've got high pressure to the southeast trying to hold on, low pressure to the northwest trying to push in. And essentially, it means the weather fronts slide from southwest to northeast. So not only the weather fronts and the rain moving that direction, the air masses are as well. And that's why, as we head into the medium to longer range, we could see some quite considerable warmth at times as this pattern continues to evolve. You can see here, primarily the rains in the north and the west, could see some skirting of rain in the southeast as well, where we do see low pressure briefly push in. But as we get into early October, you can see this pattern continues. And the best way to view this um, is having a look at the air masses. But you can see here, rainfall, cold air to the north, warm air to the south. And if we put in the upper air temperatures, you can see that remarkable 17 or 18 degree isotherm early next week. That is insanely hot air. Not only in sort of peak summertime, we'd be looking at low to mid 30s with this sort of air mass, but this is early October. It's a ridiculous air mass that the UKV has here. And quite a few of the other runs are showing something relatively similar. Now if we do have a look at those two meter temperatures, you can see today temperatures around the 19 or 20 degree mark in the east. But as we head into tomorrow, it will be cooler quite widely. Again, could nudge at 20 degree, but most areas mid to maybe high teens. Into Saturday, again, could see a 17, 18 degree, but most areas mid teens or even low teens. Into Sunday, the 1st of October, look in the east, 21, maybe 22 degrees as that warmth starts to push in. And for the 2nd of October, could even get up to 23, 24 or higher in parts of northern France, which is quite slightly off the graph. We're looking at 28, 29, could even see a 30 degrees into the first couple of days of October. Now, if this pattern comes off, we're going to have to start brushing up on what sort of vocabulary we'll use for this, uh, as it's not a heat wave in terms of uh, eclipsing heat wave thresholds for the UK, but for October, this would be a proper heat wave. And of course, we'll start to see headlines like Indian summer and things like that starting to come in. But traditionally, that is held as a title for things that happen in the second half of autumn. So from the 15th of October onwards. So technically, this wouldn't be an Indian summer, but it would be uh, a mid autumn heat wave if this did come off. And there is considerable support for this sort of pattern, as we'll see in a minute. But we have to stress, this really is, if this does occur, only in England and Wales sort of event. At the moment, not many of the ensemble members or operational runs have the warmth reaching northern areas across Northern Ireland, Scotland. Uh, really, uh, we're not seeing many at all. So it would really be a southern uh, sort of event. Um, and if we do have a look at the latest GFS, you can see how the sort of overall uh, Atlantic pattern evolves to make this uh, sort of system possible. Now, you can see the lows moving in off the Atlantic at the moment, and you can start to see the setup already by Saturday. High pressure to the southeast, low pressure to the north and the west. And it is bringing the southwesterly wind by this stage. And it's, as we head into early next week, you can see that this isn't quite the same alignment as the UKV does, but it does get that warm air in for a time. If we hold on the air masses, you can see cool air does sweep in, but this pattern occurs again as we head towards the end of next week. Look at that, a actually quite large plume of very warm air moves in for much of England, even into Wales. But this is the upper air temperature. So we put on the precipitation, you can see a weather front is moving in and will slam parts of Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland and Scotland. So it is, as I said, primarily a South East England event. But it would be extremely warm for early October. If we look at the temperature deviations, you're looking at 10 to 12 degrees above average. Ridiculous heat from the latest GFS. And beyond that, we do see high pressure try to build in. It doesn't have great control, but it does attempt, so it could bring some dry days. And then we start to see a, quite a, a weird pattern developing in the longer term as we start to see some big collisions in air masses, warm air wafting up from the south, cold air exiting out of the Arctic as the jet stream goes all over the place. If we put on the 300 HP8 winds, you can see earlier uh, through September, we had a straight flat jet stream. This pattern is showing a lot of amplification. This would show real interest in the winter period for cold weather, snowfall, things like that. But this could just bring in pretty miserable locked-in patterns as we head into 
October. So we'll have to keep an eye on that in the longer term. But for the meantime, that sort of southwesterly aligned jet stream bringing up warm air from the south in multiple batches, multiple waves, is looking like a real possibility, at least from the latest GFS. Now, if you look at the latest GM, see how that does compare. Again, low pressure continues coming off the Atlantic, high pressure building to our south and our east. And we do see those warm airs wafted up from the southwest here. We do see the 15 degree ice firm make a small glance across southern England here. As we head into longer term, towards the end of next working week, we do see again 15 degree ice firm just about nudging in, but not fully pushing in. So GM, GM has a go, but nowhere near as sort of all consuming as the GFS was around that day 10 point when it did produce a real big plume of 15 degree ice firm air and even higher than that. If you look at the ECMWF and compare that, uh, again, if we put on the upper air temperatures, uh, you can see again high pressure building towards the Atlantic, uh, the uh, uh, Europe, sorry, low pressure out in the Atlantic, warm air wafting up from the south, and early next week, again, could see the 15 degrees of them temporarily and beyond that high pressure builds back in. And again, seeing a very strong southerly flow and seeing that 15 degree ice firm push in. Very similar to the GFS, in fact. Again, though, it is powered by a big area of low pressure out to our north and our west. And you can see heavy rain for parts of Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland and Scotland here. So again, it would be a, a tale of two halves. We've got very warm, humid, hot air in the southeast. You see that by the temperature deviation. Cooler fresher conditions in the north and west still not cold by any means it's still above average but there'll be a lot of rain and cloud around so if you do now finish by having a look at the latest ensembles the latest gfs ensembles which haven't fully updated yet but go out to around the 8th of october so around day 10 so sort of the reliable period you can see the first batch of warm air next week and for london we're looking really quite dry very little precipitation a little bit of precipitation wherever we see a little bit of a dip in the ensembles temperatures as that's when the cold front moves through but by the time it moves through the uh, for the southeast it's pretty weak and just generally a bit of a bit of cloud and some drizzly rain we can see a batch of warmth early next week around the 13 14 degree ice firm for a majority of runs maybe slightly higher from a couple then we see a dip as fresher air moves in towards the middle of next week. And then by the end of next week, look at this, another big rise. Yes, we've got more scatter here as it is further out. But we are seeing even higher temperatures. Some up towards, as I said, the 15 degree isotherm or even 17, 18, 19 degree isotherm. Truly incredible air mass. And remember, the average for this time of year is 5 degrees. We're looking well over 10 degrees above average which is uh yeah extremely warm now remember in the summer our upper air temperatures peak in terms of their 1981 2020 mean around the 10 degree mark so we're five degrees cooler than that now so an equivalent anomaly in the middle of summer we'd be looking at the low 20s which would be proper uh, insane heat waves 35 to 40 degree temperatures that's the sort of anomalies we're looking at here it is really incredible to see this sort of air mass in october and again you can see low 20s next week it could be even higher mid 20s as possible as we head in towards the day 10 period now after you just have a look at the ecmwf for this uh just see if they agree and again warmth next week 14 15 degree ice firm another big rise more cooler runs though we've still got those upper air temperatures up towards that 15 16 17 degree mark but definitely more uh, around the sort of average it's only just above average, so have to bear that in mind. Uh, more precipitation as well, but you can see temperatures are going to be up and down. With the possibility, quite a few days in early October, being in the low 20s. Now, if you compare it, compare it just finally to Glasgow, you can see that there is a stark contrast. Yes, the upper air temperatures are going to be above average at times, maybe up towards the 10 degree point. But look at that precipitation. It's uh, huge compared to London. Here, we're seeing precipitation uh, in one day or uh, here amount to whatever London sees in, in two weeks or so. So, yes, it's going to be a tale of two halves. Again, we can't say exactly how it will play out. But from the latest runs, the latest on summer members, it could be a very, very wet uh, start to October, for, uh, or end of September and start of October for northern areas, and a warm, muggy, and potentially even quite dry 
end of end of September and start of October in the southeast, with potentially you could even call it an October heat wave. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. Make sure you stay safe over the next few days with some of that heavy rain around, especially tonight. And if you are looking for some warmer, dry weather, I can't believe I'm saying this, but there is the possibility of seeing you in mid twenties as we head into next week and the week after that. But as I said, we'll have to keep a very close eye on it as there still is considerable uncertainty. So as I said, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.